With its two onboard cameras, Cassini has unveiled the Saturn system as a strange, mysterious, and unique place. Saturn just captivates people because it looks so supernatural. It engenders the immediate feeling that it can't possibly be real. But we're lucky to have it. I think we're damn lucky to have Saturn. I'm glad I grew up in a solar system that had a planet like Saturn. But taking and dialing such amazing pictures when your camera is one and a half billion kilometers away through the bleak void of outer space is no mean. In charge of remotely managing the spacecraft from NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory is Julie Webster. You know scientists and engineers are true nerds, so you'll see a lot of nerd stuff on them. <laughs> Julie is Cassini's chief engineer. She's been orchestrating Cassini's intrepid explorations since before it left home. So this is a quarter size model. So this is a quarter size me. Um, I'd like to be this weight, not this height. <laughs> so you start at the top. This is a four meter antenna. It was also designed for radar. So this is the composite infrared spectrophotometer. This is the ultraviolet spectrophotometer. This is the VIMS, visual and infrared. And these are the imaging cameras, the narrow angle and wide angle that are used for the actual photos that you see. So this is the ion and neutral mass spectrometer that is the most important data that we're gonna get in the last few hours. And here's part of the magnetometer instrument, and here's the other half of the magnetometer instrument. The, the trick is, the reason you wanna put it out on a boom is you do not wanna measure the magnetic field of the spacecraft. You wanna measure the magnetic field of Saturn or whatever you're at at the time. Let's see, that's the nuclear battery. Between firing these thrusters and these thrusters, we can maneuver the spacecraft anywhere we want it to go. The main engine, uh, that's the fuel that we're out of, and that was part of the problem that kind of sealed our fate. I actually sat inside this part during the build, so when I close my eyes and think of Cassini, I actually see the wiring inside the spacecraft and the things switching on and off. And when it goes in, that's, that's what I'm going to see in my mind, is the, is the aluminum melting on the structure. Um, I just never thought it would happen, and now it is. So now we're headed back up to the first floor, to my office. Gassini divides his time between gathering data, which it stores on his internal memory, and then sending it back home. A typical day, we're out taking pictures, collecting data, storing it on the solid state recorder, and then we'll turn it back to Earth and we'll play it back for nine hours. We only have four gigabits of data that we can load up, and it takes nine plus hours to play that data back. For nine hours at a time, up to six times a week, Cassini sends its precious images of Saturn billion mile journey back to Earth. And there's one image from Cassini that may have done more than any other to alter our perception of our own place in the solar system. And this, of course, is something I'll be boasting about for the rest of my days. It's something I call the day the Earth smiled. And it is taken when the sun is behind Saturn. This, of course, you can't do from the surface of the Earth. We're on the other side of Saturn in this picture. But if you look really close over the shoulder of Saturn, between the E-ring and the G-ring, you can see our own planet Earth, a billion miles in the distance. spacecraft is on its way to Saturn. T so what does it take to get a spacecraft go. the size of a bus All systems go. with 12 delicate instruments 
all the way to Saturn and to keep it operating for 20 years. And the solid rocket boosters have been jumped. So, we'll go into the uh, dark room. Inside the dark room, the mission support area is where the whole flight team gathers for critical events, like the final plunge, launch, or orbit insertion. It took seven years to get to Saturn, a spiraling journey that involved four gravity assists, close flybys past planets that boost the speed like a slingshot, a flight path designed by head of navigation, Wayne Rock. We had a Titan 4B. Titan launch. 4B. So that, that was the, to get us away from the, the Earth, but then it still wasn't quite enough to make it all the way to Saturn, so we had two Venus flybys, gravity assists from each of those, an Earth gravity assist, and finally we got a Jupiter gravity assist, and that got us to Saturn. Yeah, but credit where credit is due, we built on Galileo. Galileo built on gravity assist has been around, and every mission has taken it to a new level. Once Cassini was approaching Saturn, it had to perform possibly its most critical maneuver of the mission. A perfectly timed engine burn that would slow it down enough to be captured in orbit around Saturn. Saturn orbit insertion was obviously incredibly nerve-wracking. We spent seven years guiding the spacecraft to get to Saturn to get it into orbit. If it hadn't done the orbit insertion, which was a 90-minute burn on the main engine, if we hadn't done that, we'd have been a Saturn flyby and just gone on out in space. The Doppler has flattened out. 